uh, I'm gonna go do the mail clap. Shout out to all of you. I hope everyone is, is well um, during this like pandemic and baking a lot. Uh, we are super grateful to be doing these um, online classes with you guys. They're really fun. Um, they help us kind of even dive into our recipes and understand them even more. Um, sometimes we tweak and change um, on the fly, um, but it's been amazing. And we love all you guys and appreciate all the feedback and support because without you, we would not be doing this. So thank you. Um, and that comes from myself and Chef Craig and the Baking Steel team. Awesome. And so today we're going to talk about bar pizza. Um, if you're from the South Shore of Massachusetts, there's a good history here. I'm not going to get into the history of it. That's not my thing. But um, it's been around for a long time. And it is essentially pizza that is made in a pan. Um, and we, and a lot of like the, the houses of pizza, like, like where I live in Cohasset or in Hanover or Rockland, they have the Rockland house of pizza. They're all like a Greek pan pizzas, essentially. They kind of use similar to this. Um, and then there's some famous bar pizza places. Um, one in Randolph called Linwood. There's another one called Town Spa, which is in Stoughton. And there's a bunch of others too, uh, but they are, also, they just crank out these bar pizzas. They are so delicious. Um, Chef Craig and I spent a bunch of time visiting these stores and then coming back to our test kitchen here and trying to recreate them. Um, and it's been really fun. Um, we've got it reverse engineered pretty well. And then there's some like bar pizza experts on, the, on Instagram and on the internet. And I know like Adam Kubin is like this amazing bar pizza guy. He's got some great insights. Um, obviously, Ken G and then Scott Wiener. Um, and I'm leaving people out, but just to give you an idea, there's a ton of these guys available for resources, which is great. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. And if we have any questions, you can kind of, Chef Craig will help. If, if we can answer one or two on the fly, Chef, just we'll throw them in there. Um, otherwise, we're gonna get into you know, what we're gonna do today is make the bar pizza dough, which is a little bit different than say our 72 hour dough. And then we're gonna get into the technique of making it in a pan and, you know, and what does the baking steel have to do with all of this? Um, but it does play a role. It's a really cool role too. Um, an important one to replicate those um, famous bar pizza places. Sound right, good? I think a good thing too that we should talk about at some point is like how we got to our recipe now because remember the first couple of times we used like that really nice flour oh, and like good. A really nice oil yeah like good question fermentation which is like got really good tomatoes and yeah we almost like way we're way overthinking it that's a great point chef um so we've kind of dialed it down a little bit more and kind of made it a little bit easier for, for us and more accessible for everybody. Um, real basic, um, it's like all purpose flour essentially. You know, we still like to use organic and that's because that's, I think it's better for our systems, et cetera, it's cleaner. That's just us personally, you don't need to do that. And today it's really difficult getting flowers, especially organics, but they're still available. And um, I'll just call out, shout out to, Janie Mills for, um, this is an all-purpose flour, which we're, what we're gonna use today in our recipe. So they're still out there. Um, so for the, for the, for the, for the, uh, for the dough, we're essentially got um, everything pre-measured. I'm getting back to the basics here. You still need to use a digital scale to measure everything. Um, that's really important. Um, we just changed the flour to an all-purpose flour because we don't really long ferment this one. It's more of a 24-hour um, dough. Um, and by the way, you can do this same day and it doesn't affect the, the taste so much, but we just try to make it a little bit healthier. The only thing I'd say about bar pizza personally is if I go to one of those legendary places, it's a super like heavy dough and oily. It seems to really... Um, upset my stomach a little bit. So we tried to scale this and change it, tweak it a little bit to be a little bit more on the healthier side. 
Um, that's the only thing I'd say different, right? Right, Jeff? Do you agree? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. um, so for the, for the for this, because we're going to do it in 24 hours, we have a couple of different ingredients. Um, it's still flour, salt, water, yeast, but we're going to add a little bit of sugar to add a little bit of sweetener to it, and then maybe, um, and you don't have to, by the way, and then a little bit of oil to help soften uh, a little bit as well. So everything has been pre-measured here. Um, so I'm going to take everything, essentially, my salt, everything right into my bowl. And this is a Cambro bowl. My sugar, I'm using sugar today and my yeast. And what I'll do is I'm going to literally just kind of whisk them together with my GIR. Um, not really a whisk. However, I'm just combining everything. I'm going to stand up just to show you guys what I'm doing. And then for the water, and there's oil in this recipe as well. So one trick I do, and I know some recipes will say keep everything separate, but I'm gonna take my water, which is filtered water, I'm gonna add my oil right to my water, just to make things a little bit simpler. I'm gonna pour it right into my, my bowl, okay? And next what I'm gonna do is just kind of combine everything together. And this, this recipe, by the way, is gonna make about four bar pizzas, which is pretty awesome. And if you wanna double this recipe, you literally just double all the ingredients. Um, if you wanna cut it in half, you literally just cut it in half. It's really basic math, comes in handy. Um, and I just remove this out of the bowl. I'm gonna scrape out the bowl as, as well as I can. Uh, and then, I'm gonna, what we do, need this thing, right? So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I've got a little stuck there, it's okay. I like these bench scrapers. Can you see this, Chef? Can I move up a little bit? Yeah, you're good. You're good, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of press everything together, just press it down. And all I'm doing, if I'm doing this for the first time, by the way, this skill level is about a two to make this go, it's not hot. I'm just pressing everything in. And if I haven't done this much, I'm gonna put a timer on myself to measure, maybe I'll mix and knead this thing for about two or three minutes. And that's it. Um, if I'm gonna do this same day, the only thing I might do differently is I might add a little bit of warm water. Because what that's gonna help do is kind of expedite the yeast um, and the fermentation is going to just kind of give it a, the proof. It's going to give it a little bit of a head start. So I do this. I continue doing this. It's starting to get sticky, which is a transition in the dough. The water's starting to go. So I know I'm just about done. Pretty basic, right? All right, cool. And by the way, we are going to be putting this uh, recording onto YouTube afterwards. So feel free to head over there and check us out too. Um, our dough goes into this, into this uh, back into the container. I'm going to cover this up, make it airtight and proof this thing overnight. Um, for me, I like to do 24 hours. So, and you can do the math any way you like. So we get a lot of questions on Okay, you say 24 hours at room temp, but then you go cold. Here's my lately over the last, like I'd say year, I've been ending all of my fermentations cold because I like to work the dough when it's cold to make my dough balls. Um, I just find it to be a little bit easier because this dough is very sticky and the cold sometimes helps prevent it from sticking so badly to your hands. Does that make sense to you guys, Chef? Is it cool? Yeah. Cold go. So 24 hours, I might do, you know what time is it now? 11.15. So I'm going to leave this on the counter for about eight hours covered, um, maybe nine hours. And then before I go to bed, I'm going to take this container and just place it in my fridge. And I'll have, um, I'll get up tomorrow and I can make bar pizza. It'll be epic. It'll be proof for 24 hours. It'll have some flavor. Um, I could do this in four or five hours too. I just feel like that 24 hours does make um, a little bit of difference. All right, so this gets covered, goes up. Let's go wash my hands off really quick. Jeff, any questions? Yeah, the, can you, 
when you come back over, show the flower bag again? Oh yeah, good question. Yeah, and we can we can link to this somewhere. Um, yep. Send it down. Follow. Up. This is called Janie's Mill. Um, they are they are available, and we also love Central Milling, um, King Arthur Flower, which is awesome too. We just can't seem to get access to the market. So online shopping, these guys actually have. They had some yeast last week too. They might be out now, but go check them out. You can see this. It's backwards, I know, right? Janiesmill.com. And we'll and we'll link to that too. But their their expertise is going business to consumer, so they're thriving in this type of environment. Um, there's kind of this set up for it, which is brilliant, really. Um, and by the way, it's really nice flour. We're, we're really enjoying it. Um, and I know my kids are for the English muffins and the bar pizzas. And, um, and they've got a, an assortment of different flowers too. Um, and yeah, feel free to, this is all purpose, 100%. You could add a little bit of spelt in there. But for bar pizza, we're going old school, right? Right, Chef? Yeah. All right, so that takes care of the dough, okay? We have, let's get into the technique a little bit. We made our dough, so let's wake up the next day. Oh, sorry, Siri. Uh, the next day, um, we're gonna make our pizza. I peeled off one of the doughs. This is a, this is a 200 gram of dough. Um, bar pans are essential. Um, what I love about these bar pans, and we'll link to these as well. This, these are called American Metal Craft. They're available uh, online. Chef, yep. yeah, um, anybody, can get them. anybody can get them. American Metal Craft, they're like 12 or $13. They're like a, a shallow cake pan. Um, I think it's anodized aluminum. There's another brand called Lloyd's, which also carries these. Um, they're really essential for this technique that we're gonna make uh, on the bar pizza, okay? Um, so let's do this. Let's get up, let's pretend we'll fast forward. Our dough's been proofing or fermenting for 24 hours. Now what we're gonna do is get our dough ready. And how we do this, it takes about an hour. Um, and if you're having a pizza party, you know, get like three or four of these. This is a really fun way to do it. But I'm gonna also, at that time, I'm gonna fire my oven up to 500 degrees. I've already done that. Um, I want my oven to preheat. I want the steel to preheat the same way I would typical pizza. Um, I just want to get, get that oven super hot, okay? Take my bar pan and Here's one of the secrets of this pizza. To get that crisp underneath, it needs to have some kind of oil. So we're gonna use olive, a good olive oil underneath our pan and saturate it pretty, pretty good. Um, this is gonna give it that nice crispy bottom. Um, grab a paper towel because this, this pizza can get stuck on the side. So I like to take the oil and really kind of oil the sides of the pan up. You can see what I'm doing here. And this is a, important. This thing's hard to release out of here if you don't do it. So oil the sides, oil the bottom. And what I'll do next is I'm gonna take my dough and here is another little gem that we discovered. Um, we basically take the dough out of the container and we do not make dough balls. Huh, what? Is that crazy? Um, we find this dough to be really soft, um, so we don't even make the balls. We just find it, it proofs right in this pan. So we take the dough out. I've already cut a portion out. Um, stick it right into the pan, okay? And <clears throat> a couple of things. We recommend about, I think on our recipe, we call for 230 grams of dough, and that's what I cut here. Um, what I realized, like I, I think a real, professional bar pizza maker is gonna use less dough, like 180 grams maybe, and they're gonna really press it around the pan. I, I had to do some yoga this morning, so I didn't have as much time to prepare this. So what we did is we, um, I cut out two 30s, and I just started the process. So it's gonna be more, it's gonna be easier to stretch around the whole pan. It might be a little bit heavy, but anyway, anywhere from 180 to 230. So I pick up, make sure this thing doesn't, um, Get stuck. I want to oil both sides. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. It just looks like this. And here's where you need to be a little bit patient, okay? Because um, this dough needs to press out to the sides and the edges, I'm going to get it started, okay? I'm going to be very patient. Um, I'm going to do this 
over the course of maybe an hour, okay? So that way, we're not in any kind of rush or pinch. As my oven's preheating, I'm gonna stretch this dough out. And if I, get, if I have three or four pans, great. I can do three or four pans at a time. But you can see, I haven't done, hasn't gone far yet. I'm gonna let it rest, be patient, maybe read a book, and then we'll do some yoga, and then just press it out again in about 15 minutes. Okay? But because we're at a little bit of a time restraint here, guess what? I already did one. See that? Um, so I started this about an hour ago, and I've been pressing this to go out. This is 230 grams also. And I've been pressing it out, and I finally hit all around the edges, right? I might even stick a little bit of oil on the sides. Because this dough is um, a little bit thicker, I want you know, some people will call it like docking the dough, where they'll almost like puncture holes in it so it doesn't like lift off too much when we're baking it. Um, I don't have a docker, so I'm kind of just using my fingers to press it in there. And I'm going to press it in pretty good against the edges. Uh, does that make sense so far, you guys? Any questions, Chef? Fuck pizza. Any questions, guys? Yeah. Questions. Oh, great. So let's take a little pause, answer some questions before we go to the next step. Uh, show the scale. See what I was about the scale. The digital scale? Yeah. Yes. So can you see this here? This is a brand called My Way. We'll link to this too somewhere. Um, maybe we'll put it right in the recipe. My Way is a great brand. Um, it does obviously great measuring. Um, I also think that you need to have a micro scale. Now, some of the scales are combined, but these micro scales can dial it into one one hundredth of a gram, which is pretty awesome. Um, so think of it in terms of um, your yeast and things. This is ideal. So you need two scales, technically. All right, what else we got? Someone's asking if it's ending on time in 30 minutes, so at 11.30, or is it going to go a little longer? Um, mm, might, be, might be pretty close to where we are. Might be. Yeah, if not, we'll be up on YouTube after. Yeah, we'll be up on YouTube after. It's totally. Uh, docking with a docker, you could use your fingertips. You could use a fork, you could docker. Yeah, and that just uh, means, this still the, the um, I find like if I put enough sauce and cheese on, it's not going to blow up too much anyway. It might prevent the air pockets. Uh, we will send the recipe out with all the ingredients, yes. measurements, absolutely. Uh, dun, 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 dun. What tumbler are you using to drink out of? Ah, this is a Yeti. A Yeti. Um, I drink the, I, this is like an awesome, these things are ma amazing. Made out of steel, so it, um, it keeps warm stuff warm, and I think cold stuff cold. Works great. Almost like too hot. You need to like put the coffee temperature that you like to drink it in in here if, you, if it's too hot it'll stay warm in here for like hours almost annoying to a point right yes um can you do a quick description on putting the steel outside of the grill and explain to people why you don't need to cook at 800 degrees versus well, okay a sidebar i like this or just in general, because we have some questions about cooking outside of Weber's grills. Oh, that's a good, we, we might do that class soon. That's a good idea. Um, outdoor ovens are not pizza ovens, okay? So they have, they made Weber's in general. That's the most popular. They made the stainless steel, super thin gauge um, tops, which are super light. In other words, all the top heat vanishes. It's gone. So it's not a pizza oven just because it can get to 800 degrees. You never... I don't want to say never, but really seldom ever want to cook 800 degrees on steel. Remember, the baking steel works its magic around 500 degrees. That's why it's so successful in a home oven. So you go outside, keep it around 400 degrees, um, and make your pizza. And there's different techniques we offer for, for that, but that's a good starting point. Um, awesome. Anything else? Um, just explaining the the bulk so you don't portion before you go in the refrigerator but after right i do yeah and we i just found like we, we just i think we i don't know if we found we saw somebody doing this yet but we just stopped making dough balls for bar pizza i just find like why bother just stick your dough in there and uh right. we're not looking for those air bubbles right we're not looking for that um but it's got some nice flavor because it's in bulking overnight
Anybody else before we get going? All right, so let's go. All right, let's do it. So, the, so now you can see my pan. I've got all the way to the edges. This took about an hour. I was patient. Um, now what I'm gonna do is sauce and cheese it. And, um, oh, I didn't get my cheese first. My cheese is hanging out in the fridge. Uh, let me grab that. I like cold cheese, um, and we've talked about this, we're gonna mention it again, always shred your own cheese. And I say that because when you buy pre-packaged pre cheese, what is that? Um, you got these shreds of cheese, okay? Um, when you buy a pre-packaged, each one of those shreds is coated with a starch, and that makes that cheese brown too easy. So we find, buy yourself a block of cheese, go to the deli and say, hey, can I have some mozzarella, but can you slice it in big chunks versus the slices? And they're fine with that. And then just grate it yourself and you'll have a much better melting cheese. We prefer whole milk mozzarella, I mean whole milk low moisture mozzarella versus like a skim milk because it doesn't, um, the milk solids seems to brown easier with a skim milk, so we go whole milk and it just seems a little bit better. Um, combination of a little bit of cheddar and a little bit of whole milk, low moisture mozzarella. That's what we got today. Uh, that's it. So use what you have. That's what we got. All right. So tomato sauce. This is a variation. I, um, it's crushed tomatoes. We're using Jersey Fresh. I add a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, um, and that's it. And I just feel like that's perfect for this style pizza. Feel free to add crushed red pepper to add shaved garlic if you'd like. But again, we're basics, um, back to the basics for us on this. I've actually even got a piece of basil to it here to kind of steep it in there, add a little flavor. That's our basic. So now I'm gonna make my pizza and I'll show you guys a top down view in a second. Our camera guy called in sick today. So again, less is more on here. I'm not gonna put the, um, basil on, because my kids might eat this for lunch. So I bring my sauce, and I'll show you guys on the top down, all the way to the edge, okay? And then what I'll do is the cheese, I kept it in the refrigerator, so I didn't go too heavy. Let me show you guys what I mean here, go like this. Can you guys see that? Right? That's it. So maybe, I don't know if you guys call, you call that light or heavy chef? What do you think? Medium at this. Medium? All right. Medium. And then for the cheese, I'll do the same thing. Oh, here again. So now I'm going to do the cheese. I just put the cheese, which has been grated, all the way around. Some, you know, and I'm still kind of learning on the bar pizzas. I don't make a ton of these, um, but they're really fun to make. So you could, they're actually easy to make. You could put a bunch of these pans together and have a party. Pretty, pretty simple. I'm bringing the cheese all the way to the edge. I think um, kind of adds that crispiness a little bit on those burnt edges that we all love. That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna show you guys a top down view again. Here's this. Here's my top down view. Yeah, I see that. Nice. All right, so that's our cheese. The oven's been preheating um, for an hour, so it's hot, it's ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna essentially take this pan, we're gonna bake this for eight to 10 minutes, okay? Um, and then we're gonna show you another little trick. Right? Because, put this in the oven, Put your timer on. I'm gonna put on probably eight minutes just to take a peek after eight minutes. But because you guys are, uh, we're doing an online class, guess what? I've already baked a pizza, isn't that cool? Um, and you can see it's in the pan. Um, it's baked for about 10 minutes. And now the trickiest part of making bar pizza I have found so far is to remove this out of the pan in one piece and then put it back on the steel 
for two more minutes just to really crisp up the bottom of the pizza. And this is where I think the baking steel plays a huge role. It's not only playing a role because the heat's going into this pan right now, but it's gonna play a secondary role when I move it out of here and place this back into the oven for about two minutes. And so I'm gonna use a pizza peel just to help with that. Um, and you really want to take, and you got to be careful here, take a knife and work around the edges and lift it and be patient. It takes practice and work all the way around, okay? Um, to save you guys some time, I've already done this. Grab a spatula and you can see, I'm going to take this out and place it on my peel just like this. And I'm going to put this into the oven. Whoa, we almost lost it for two minutes. And um, it's gonna crisp up that bottom of the pizza. And again, this is something you can do almost ahead of time. You could actually pre-bake four or five of these things and leave them in whole. And then as your guests arrive, you can start popping them in the oven. And um, it's one heck of a pizza party, right, Chef? Totally. Totally. So anyway, so grab a bunch of these, do all your preparation. Right, and um, you're gonna just be rocking the bar pizza party. These you things, almost like fire, you could probably fire two at a time on a steel too, almost, right? Yeah, because these are technically these are 10 inch pies. So these bar pans, we prefer 10 inches. I think that's a great size for um, to make these. Yeah, bigger ones too. I think 10 inches is ideal. Totally. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Fridge steel two minutes and serve. Uh, it's, well, it's more of just kind of how we're doing the class, but, um, Yeah, we had, a, because this is the class, I didn't want to have you guys sit here for 10 minutes as this thing bakes, and then for two or three minutes having me remove it, so we kind of did a few of these steps earlier today just to help, um, expedite the class. Yes. Uh, any way to skip the crisping step, let it cook longer? Yeah, you can just leave it in the pan, I guess. You could. I just find, like, that extra... That super hot steel, you know, it shines in this environment. And that's why just like that extra two minutes, boom, it's gonna be awesome. Now, let's take a peek, you guys can see, inside the oven here. I got my hand covering that up. You can see underneath here, see how it's starting to get some nice color? Like, really amazing. Um, the dream, the dream pizza. These are good too, yeah, amazing. Um, how long does it take to keep the steel? About an hour? One you? hour. Okay. One hour is a great rule of thumb. You could do it in 45 minutes, but just for the basic math, we always just say one hour, generalize. Uh, do we drain the crushed tomatoes to reduce the liquid? Uh, not really. So we, these ones were purchased crushed already, so there's not a lot of liquid. If you are crushing yourself, just be careful not to pulverize them too much. Because just like when you use, you make your smoothie and your Vitamix, if you blend for an extended period of time, it becomes more liquidy, right? So the same thing applies to your tomatoes. Just remember, pulse them, pulse them, pulse them. You don't want to really cook, have to pulverize them too much. Um, yes. yes, to clarify, we put the pan with the dough, sauce, and cheese on top of the baking steel. Yep. Cook it, cook it for eight or nine minutes. Yes. And then remove it from the pan and crisp up the bottom even more. Right. To get some of that steam out of there for another couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference, yeah. I can probably yank this thing out of here now because I want to show you guys the bottom. Um, Oh man, it's looking pretty. Um, I wanna show you guys this version first. Here, you can see, doesn't that look amazing? Um, and now, underneath, you guys can see that bottom crust. Look at that, that's just awesomeness right there. Organic flowers, organic, um,
Yeah. Yeah, there it is. I hit mute, sorry. Um, I'm not sure what I missed there, but um, it's super crispy. I said I might not even tell my kids that I made this. Shh. Anybody else have any questions? Um, if you do, we're gonna put this up on YouTube and on Facebook later. Just drop something in the comments. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like this and uh, tell your friends.